welcome back everyone. Today we are going to be looking at rounds four and five of the, the the tournament, the same tournament as the last video that I'll link in the description. Okay, so in round four I get paired against a 1300, or basically a 1400, so let's see what happens. E4, C5, we get the, uh, we get the Nidorf. We get the Nidorf and we play the Bishop G5 line. My opponent plays e5. This is already a pretty serious mistake because I can play knight to f5 for free. And um, you don't really want to allow the knight on f5 because it's attacking d6. It's also just a kind of an annoying knight, stopping the bishop, stopping the bishop from moving. My opponent takes it. Bishop e7, bishop c4, knight c6. And now I have a I have a really nice position, but how exactly do I take advantage of it? So I, I thought here for a long time, um, I was looking at lines. Mainly my main idea was bishop takes f6, which is the best move, but the next follow-up is important. Um, I'm supposed to just put the knight on d5, which makes a lot of sense, occupying the outpost square. And I can make him room for c3, which would stop the knight from jumping in here. This would just be a normal positional move. But uh, I got a little impatient. I tried to win this game too quickly. So I played knight to e4 instead. Just trying to make some threats immediately. But this allows knight to d4. And it looks like I can play c3, but my opponent actually responds with d5. And now with these two pawns in the center, um, things get complicated quickly. So takes, 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 takes. Um, what is actually going on? I guess I can take this. I mean, I don't know. I can move. I don't really like this for white because of the center. Yeah, so uh, my opponent missed knight d4, unfortunately for me. Instead, uh, he just played the natural move, bishop to, which is bishop to e7, guarding this pawn. Okay, so now I played um, queen to g4. I'm trying to attack this pawn on g7. What I should do instead is just be more patient and play pawn to c3, stopping this idea of knight to d4. This is basically black's only counterplay other than b5 at some point that weakens the knight. So my opponent only has the counterplay of playing knight to d4 and to d5, and I was actually trying to stop, I was just actually talking, thinking to myself, stop d5, don't allow d5, and I allow it anyway, because I go queen to g4, and, and this doesn't allow it immediately, but after like a move king to f8, this is the best move, kind of hard to play this move, but it makes sense, you're not castling into an attack. But after it castles, and castles, now my, my now my opponent can play knight to d4. And after c3, um, yeah, it's still, it's still d5. And if I, if I play like bishop to d5 to stop it, there's actually queen to c8 attacking this and this. And I have to sack my rook, basically. And, I mean, you don't want to be down in exchange for no reason when you don't have to be. Okay, so I should play c3 here. I still have a chance to play c3, but I never do because, um, I don't know, I don't know. I just didn't play it. Uh, okay, so I castled instead. My opponent uh, blunders, blunders with pawn to b5. This just allows f6. So f6 threatens checkmate. You basically have to take. Now I take. And I thought that I would just be winning a piece because no matter where the queen moves, um, no matter where the queen moves, I take and then... I do something, like I can go here or something. I can take rook back and then I just win. Or yeah, something like that. But I just completely missed that my opponent can uh, sack the queen. And once my opponent sacks the queen, um, I didn't see this at all. This is now a little bit more difficult to win. Not that much more, but I have a queen versus a brick and a knight, which is worse, which is, I'd rather just be up a piece. So I was kind of unhappy that I missed it, and I just took, and I missed that I could take on f7, which would be a lot more accurate and a lot more easy from a human perspective to win, because take away this, taking away this f7 pawn weakens the king a lot, and there's just a lot of ideas, like a uh, smothered base, uh, like check, 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 and checkmate. But I didn't see this, and I took for I took instead. Now after I took my bishop, I'm like, oh no, I could have taken the f7. Why? Why am I so bad at chess? I'm I'm so bad at why, why didn't I take an f7? Now I just delayed my I just delayed my lunch break for like for like 30 more minutes. What am I doing? So I'm just really really unhappy. Which you don't um usually your uh, good chess players are supposed to control their emotions, but uh, that's not always easy. 
So I take knight to d4, c3, knight to b5, knight e4. Um, I'm still in a really good position, no reason to be that unhappy. a4, now I take this pawn. Uh, now I have uh, three pawns versus one, so if I make enough trades, I can start pushing my pawns. So now um, a move like rtd1 would be disastrous because of knight to e3, the knight to e2 check. But um, luckily, luckily I can I can see a fork. I can see a fork. So I go king to b1. So that goes back to e6, uh, rook d1. But I don't see this fork. I can't see I can't see every fork. And I lose a pawn, but it's okay. It's it's okay. So rook e8, knight d6. Now I'm attacking the rook, which basically forces a trade, which is good. I like trades. King to f8, which is trying to allow this knight to move. But moving the king into checks is a little bit dangerous. So I play b3 now. I should play b4 to trap the rook on the side. Really no reason not to do this, uh, but I did But I did not do this. I did not. So I played b3, and now I played b4. Like, there, well, I don't even know what I'm doing. Uh, rook to h5, and now this is where it really starts becoming a little bit crazy. Um, I go rook, rook takes a6 because I think I, what I thought is that I could take this knight and get a fork. And if my opponent takes, I can check and get a fork like this. That's what I thought. Um, but instead, my opponent blocks with the rook, and I thought that this was a check. I mean, I thought that this was a I thought that this was a check, um, but it's not. So it doesn't work. So my opponent takes, and I'm like, okay, well he had a check anyways. So let's just go king b2, and maybe we can set it up again. But no, we can't set it up again because because it's it's not a check. It's it's not a check. So, yeah, um, I lose two pawns for no reason. Now I'm really, really unhappy. I'm, like, furious. Because I thought I was supposed to win this game, like, 20 minutes ago. So now I'm becoming really impatient. And... Oh. <coughs> and, okay, so I go b5, c4, and uh, I sack the rook because... Because um, I was kind of tilted. I tilted it in over the board game. So I sacked the rook, and okay, what could I have done instead? Maybe a check or something. Get out of the get out of the rook sway, and then push pawns. That's probably okay. But I sacked the rook with the idea that if the pawn takes, I can start pushing this pawn, and I can probably queen the pawn. And if the rook takes, I can sack the queen again, because now after b6, b7, um, my opponent cannot uh, cannot stop this pawn. And it's true that my opponent can not stop this pawn. And after rook f5, b7. I make a queen, and I win the game later with this passed pawn. However, 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 um, however, 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 my opponent can play rook to c5. Wait, no, no, no. My opponent, yeah, my, my opponent can play rook to c5, take this pawn, and, uh, uh-oh, spaghetti-o. Um, is there a fortress? Uh, who knows? Honestly, who knows? Like, um, okay, would I have probably won this game somehow? Maybe, but would I have been happy? Not, no, um, no, not at all. Not at all, because, like, allowing this is just kind of ridiculous. So, yeah, I actually, tr after the game, I tried to win this against, against like, a strong engine, and I, I did not. And then I tried to, I tried to hold this position against the engine, I played a few moves, and I was done. Okay. Let's go to the next game. So I have 4-4 four now. Um, a draw wins the tournament for me, but I don't want to draw. That would... That would not be good for my rating. So I get, and my opponent in this round actually, actually beat my, uh, beat the second highest rated player in the tournament. So that was actually helpful. He was an eighteen hundred. He's also my friend. I played him in round five of the Idaho Quest, but unfortunately he lost to my opponent in this round. So hopefully I don't lose. Also, let's see what happened. We get the London because of course we do. And what I do here is I play so I play these moves. But I mix up the move order to, to try to confuse my opponent. So I, I take, which usually usually I don't take so early. But my opponent kind of forgets to play c3. And because of that, I have this move knight to d5, threatening knight b4, which would win the bishop. So my opponent has to go back. And now my uh, this is like a new position. I don't think any neither of us have ever seen this before. So I'm happy with that. I don't really want to run into any preparation. Ooh, preparation, what is that? Um, so knight c6, c3, um, I'm threatening knight to b4, c3, now I kick the knight, a6, and now we have a lot of pieces on the board, and I'm happy with that, because with a lot of pieces on the board, there are chances for tactics. And also, in these kind of positional games, 
positional um, positions with a lot of pieces and not a lot of open lines, these uh, lower rate players sometimes struggle to find plans. So my plan is very simple because I just want to play e5. This is my pawn break. And my opponent plays knight to c2, and I thought he was going to play a5, which is his pawn break. This is what he should do. But instead what we get is knight to e1, which is very suspicious. So I guess I guess my opponent was trying to play f4. And okay. I guess that makes sense to try to stop e5, but it doesn't really stop e5. And also we can see the king wait. What? Okay. It doesn't really stop e5. I can like play like bishop f8 and then play e5 after that or something. So this this is an idea, but what my opponent really should really be doing is attacking on the queen side, trying to trying to uh, stack the rooks and going after this weak pawn on the a file. But instead, my opponent plays knight to e1. Now I play e5. Now everything's starting to open up. There are a lot of lines here with like a bunch of trades, and then this queen gets into a little bit of trouble on this file. And knight to e1 also disconnects the rooks, which isn't really helpful. And also. After a lot of trades here, these bishops are kind of loosely protected. Okay, but um, my opponent tries to tries to cheese me with the cheeky cheeky sneaky sneaky greeky greeky. With bishop takes f7, and what he thinks is that he can fork me like this, and he can he can fork me like this. But unfortunately, the queen gets trapped in the middle of the board here. So yeah, can't go here. Uh, can't go here, 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 and can't go here, which means the queen is trapped. So my opponent actually saw this after queen e4. Um, I saw this in advance while when I was calculating e5. So my opponent thought he he could get a freaky, freaky, greaky, sneaky, whatever, but no, it doesn't work. So after I took the bishop, I was like, okay, there we go, that's it. Um, five out of five. Let's go. We're going to dank her again. Very, very cool. Um, and then. Yeah, so now I can finally relax because I'm up a piece. So the rest of the game goes like this. Um, I actually missed rook takes g2 in this position, which would be very cool because I can play knight to h4. And also, um, I had a feeling my opponent wasn't going to resign, so when I missed this, I was unhappy again because now I can take him just bishop d5, uh, bishop d5 next. So I missed rook takes g2, I was playing too fast, at least I can still win a piece. But okay, a few more moves. Finally, we got a checkmate. Okay, so uh, we got five out of five, and we got first place in the high school section, which means we didn't throw, which is very, very nice. Okay, so that was this tournament. Overall, um, I didn't play too great, but I won the games, which is what matters. Okay, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.